And then he went to prison. <laughs> Did <him> good, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're recounting an amusing story to a group of friends. Do you, A, tell the anecdote exactly as it happened, B, build your own part in the story a little, but keep the events true to life, C, tell a wildly inaccurate version of events, casting yourself in the starring role? Mine would have to be A, I have to say, because I've got some quite amusing stories of, you know, chefs and stuff like that, and they all kind of know each other, so that they kind of find it all out at the end of the day, wouldn't it? I've got the performer in me, so I, I, I kind of agree with you. It's no point going completely off beam because you will be found you out. You big up your part then, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, I would. I, uh, you know, history kind of reinvents itself in my small mind here. <laughs> anyway, let's see how honest our stars on screen are when recounting an anecdote. One is tempted to go for all three there, but if the story is good enough, you can surely leave out two of them and go for option A. If the ambience is right, you know, it's, and I'm telling a story, there's no harm in just embellishing a little bit. Not a lot. B? I've got to be honest. Uh, yeah, dress the story up a bit to make it funnier and more interesting. Option B. Oh, everyone's option B, aren't they? But what would Blue Peter star Connie Huck say? I know Connie, and I think she'd sort of glam it up a bit. She's quite extrovert, she's quite, you know... It's only little, but quite powerful. OK. Yeah, I think she'd sort of glam it up a little bit. Listen, do you know the lady? I'm right with you, mate. B. B. Let's have a look. Tell the story, but tell it in a good way, because it's a good story. So, yeah, keeping the events true to life, I'd just, you know, make sure I pick the right words and put a bit of passion into it. B. <laughs> Last question this round. And everyone's got it right so far. It's worth a point, and it's for you, Len. Take a look at this clip from Candid Camera with the ultimate test of honesty for drivers. Hop out and I'll park it for you. Oh, no, 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 you're not parking this, not after that effort. What effort? You just hit that three times. No, I hit that one twice. The other one I hit once. <laughs> you ain't going to park this, is he? Go on. I'm not going to drive this car. That's the standard of driving. Now, please. Oh, it's regulation. I'm sorry, whether it's regulation or not. You are not driving a Rolls and doing damage like that. That's three cars you've hit, and I sincerely hope you're going to take the numbers and see that the people, the damage on that one is quite considerable. You've done £15 pounds worth of damage. <laughs> £15 pounds of damage, chance to be a fine <laughs> thing, eh? <laughs> In a busy car park, you swing your car door open and scrape the car beside you. Do you, A, leave a note of apology on the windscreen with your contact details? B, only leave a note if you think it's a really bad scrape. C, check that no one noticed, then park at the other end of the car park. Well, I present crime watch and I couldn't possibly say what I do. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I think the natural reaction is to check that uh, if anyone's looking. Oh, yeah. And, but I think I would do that, but then I would leave. If the, if the scratch or the dent was bad, I'd leave a note, I think. Ali, why do you look guilty when that... Because she presents crime watch, it freaks me out. Yeah, he's looking guilty because he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to send me down. <laughs> So, you scrape the paintwork of the car next to you. What would our stars on screen do? I'd only leave a number if I thought it was really bad and it wasn't something that would come out with a bit of tea cut. B. It's really bad, but I'd hate the hassle of, like, sorting it all out and stuff. And I'd probably do C. That's bad, isn't it? But I'm only being honest. I wouldn't like someone doing it to me, so I'd leave a note with my contact details. It's A. Oh, So, oh. Len, what would comedian oh. Roland <laughs> Riveron do? What's your initial reaction? C is my, ne uh, is my initial reaction, C, but if you've got a feeling about this... No, I've got no feeling got at all. Have you got a twinge? N not even a twinge. I think he'd probably go for C, wouldn't he? Yeah. He's yeah. that kind of C? character. He's a bit shifty. C. C. You check that no one saw and clear yeah. off? Yeah. Let's have a look. One of the luxuries of having three children is you can blame them for all manner of things. So, I'm going to go with C. Good boy. There we are. So cool. Adam Len 2, James and Simon 2. Oh. <laughs> Round 2 of today's Honesty Theme. And don't forget, you can play along at home. Just keep track of your answers to today's questions. And at the end of the show, I'll tell you how honest you are. It only works if you ask truthfully. But right now, it's time to meet the great British public. Here they all are. 
the bingo ladies, the barristers, the hairdressers, and the gospel choir. There's a point on offer for each question, and to earn your points in this round, you'll have to predict how honest we Brits really are. And it's seen your question, and to illustrate it, take a look at this. Lasers seem to be turning up everywhere, even in the local supermarket. Although the manager may be reluctant to admit it. I wouldn't want to mention the word laser at, at this particular stage of the game, because it must have gone through all government tests before they even thought of installing them in any kind of a place like a supermarket. But this laser is no death ray. It simply reads the product codes on your shopping, tells the computer what you bought, tots up the bill. You get home and you realise that you weren't charged for several items in your weekly shop. Do you A, head straight back to the shop to pay the difference, B, promise yourself you'll donate a few extra quid to a charity instead, C, nothing, they've been charging too much at that supermarket for years. Let's fire up the random selector. The bingo ladies, they like a gamble, so what would they do? Phew, that is tough, isn't it? It is tough, especially with those bingo ladies, because they're... You like them, don't you? you like the I like them. them in a special way. Mm. <laughs> They're of an age, aren't they? So I can't imagine that they'd just do a runner and they wouldn't, they wouldn't say anything. I really, I, I can't. My nan would. She'd have been right up Beth McGuin High Street before you could say anything. <laughs> Should we say C then? No, leave it to you, but I'd say C. 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 Okay, so they just keep it. Let's yeah. see if you're right. Definitely a C, me. I see. It's awful thing to say, but I think it would definitely be a C. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a C. Good girls. So I'm then saying you're the flight. There's a point on offer again. And this question features an agonising presentation in Dragon's Den. Honestly, when will these people learn? 